Okay, hello, hello everyone, and uh, I want to talk a bit about testing uh, plugins using containers. That's what I was working on um, in lately. Um, so let me share my presentation. Yeah. So testing plugins with uh, containers. Um, let's start from the basics. Uh, who am I? So I'm Shimon Stein, uh, aka Shimstein on IRC and GitHub, uh, at Shimon Stein uh, in the community forums. Uh, and most of the time, I'm working on the Form and RH Cloud plugin, which is the plugin that uh, connects uh, Red Hat Insights, which is a cloud-based cloud service uh, by Red Hat, uh, to Foreman. So basically, I'm trying to show information from the cloud in Foreman uh, UI and get the information from Foreman into the cloud back. Um, so that's what's keeping me busy most of the time. Uh, and as part of this work, um, I um, I will talk a bit about how I got into the containers and testing stuff. So. Uh, the background, the plugin is heavily dependent on Catello. So it for, it depends on the EVR extension for the Postgres. Uh, basically, the Catello uh, depends on uh, that extension on Postgres. Uh, and Catello also needs a couple of specific RPMs. Um, besides that, the plugin uses GitHub Actions for a CI for testing. So, um, and both, both of these facts basically prevent, uh, prevented me from testing the plugin uh, in a regular way because by default, GitHub Actions actually uh, gives you a Ubuntu container and it's uh, a big headache to actually try to install RPM there or to match packages. So, uh, yeah. So that's basically what I wanted to uh, tackle. Uh, and as a bonus points, uh, I wanted to create a test environment that would be the same for dev machines, for CI and everything else. So you could actually try and run your tests on your own machine and you will be sure that it will run the same way on um, on the CI. So the next step was looking what GitHub Actions can actually offer me and uh, GitHub Actions could actually offer me containers. So I would need a container for the DB because of the EVR extension and the, uh, and the container for a Foreman testing environment all the uh, code. So for DB, we we had something that was already created. Uh, Joe Mitch uh, already has a container uh, with EVR, so we could reuse that. And for Foreman, we had to actually uh, create it uh, by ourselves. So the requirements for the testing container it should be based on RH family image. I was using CentOS 7. That would be good enough for me. Uh, it should have all the prerequisites installed, all the uh, RPMs installed, all the code there. Um, and it should compile and run, compile plugins and compile and run the tests uh, as quickly as possible. So let's dive in a bit into the Docker file, which is uh, obviously the um, base of the container. 
Um, as I said, it begins with the simple CentOS 7 um, container. And above the CentOS container, we have to uh, install uh, our SCL versions uh, of Ruby, Node.js, even Git, and Postgres to get a sort of latest and greatest for uh, development. Um, next step would be to install, uh, to yum install all, all those packages, including um, uh, including development packages and uh, all dependency packages like zlibdevel, libxml, and all that stuff, all libvirdevel. Uh, which are needed for a um, normal Catello uh, installation process. Um, next step, next logical step would be installing the code. So uh, I'm creating the slash projects uh, folder under the container and I clone all uh, the relevant um, repos. So I'm cloning the uh, Foreman itself, Catello, uh, Foreman tasks, because uh, it has to be version matched, and my own plugin. Next step would be uh, to uh, enable those plugins in the, uh, in the Foreman. Um, so I have to add uh, all the plugins basically uh, into uh, the bundler D uh, directory. Next step, um, as I said before, the main um, uh, the main requirement was to uh, have the container uh, working quickly. So by default, a bundle install from zero, from scratch, and then PM install, and then running test suite will take you something like half an hour and more, uh, which is not that great. So we needed to create at least some caching for uh, things that don't have to be changed frequently. So next step, uh, was to cache a bundler folder. So uh, we are configuring bundler to use a vendor bundle folder under, under the foreman. It will create a folder with all the gems under this folder uh, and uh, having it uh, already cached, this uh, makes the process of bundle install much quicker. Next step would be npm install. Um, but before we can npm install, we should install this nice npm uh, module called npm proxy cache. Uh, this one is something, this is something that I have found on the internet. Um, it's the, it's a gem basically, a gem, an npm package, sorry. Um, it's an NPM package that enables caching, uh, local caching for uh, all NPM uh, packages. And I think it uh, caches also a couple of other uh, responses from the NPM. So basically it, uh, it makes all the communication to, uh, to the NPM servers uh, to work locally. So that's the NPM proxy cache. So that's why I installed this one before uh, I uh, actually do the NPM install. So since it's a cache uh, and what it does under the hood is actually uh, creating a proxy. It's a, it's a it's full blown proxy that actually proxies all the request, requests. Uh, so I have to uh, configure it as a proxy. It actually sits on 8080 port. 
and I have to run it before I actually um, uh, start the npm install procedure. Once I have installed, uh, once I have run the npm install in this stage, the proxy actually saves all the requests. So the next time I will run npm install, it would be much quicker. And then I run the npm install plugin script because it doesn't work well with a SCL Ruby, I think. And so it fails to run as a post install block in the npm install. So I have to run it manually. But once I run it manually, it actually installs all the npm packages for, uh, for the plugins. So uh, everything is good in that, uh, in that regard also. So now uh, I have created a run test shell script, which is a shell script that will be shipped as part of the container. Uh, that uh, will actually do all the work for us uh, to test everything uh, for our plugin. So it starts with bundle install yet again, because the, the idea is that once you have cre uh, cre downloaded the container image, uh, you are connecting, a, you are mounting your a local copy of your code uh, in order to test your current version of the code and not the stable one that is already in the uh, in the docker file so you need to reinstall all your uh, bundle packages and all your npm packages in case you are uh, changing something uh, uh, in your pr in that regard so I rerun bundle install, which will take very little time. Then I'm just waiting for the database to come to become online. Once the database on is online, I can db create the um, database in case they are they were not already there. And then I run the migrations. And in the next step, I run again the npm proxy cache, which will uh, start up the uh, proxy for us. Uh, the T is a, a parameter that says that the cache could be a week older than, uh, than the current run. So basically, uh, it will not invalidate caches uh, for a week. And then I, run, and I rerun npm install and npm install plugins in case something is changed in the uh, npm packages. Once I have done all the pre uh, prerequisites, I can actually run uh, the regular test dense. So I'm running the Rubocop for my plugin. I'm running tests for my plugin. I'm running the assets pre-compile uh, and web compile uh, to ensure that the last two steps are basically to ensure that uh, uh, all the assets uh, can be compiled successfully and without errors so okay next thing uh, how do i deploy that container so i'm using quay to deploy my container it actually enables us to uh, have a trigger based on github so i have a, a github uh, trigger each time i uh, i commit to the uh, to the foreman branches in the rh cloud basically those are the versions that I uh, have for uh, each form and version. And it will re rebuild the, uh, uh, the testing image. Uh, so I will have that one uh, up to date 
always up to date. Um, if I want to run it from, uh, as part of my plugin, I also have the Docker Compose file. So if we want to run the test locally, uh, we can do that by Docker Compose up and it will run all the, uh, all the tests locally. So I am creating the Postgres server, uh, which is the, uh, the server I was talking on about. Uh, and I'm reusing the my own uh, uh, Docker file from Way. Uh, plus, I'm uh, actually mounting it as a, in as the Foreman RH Cloud on the container side. Um, Next step, next steps. So uh, this actually works for me, but if we want to have it uh, for other plugins, um, currently the only option uh, the only option is to actually uh, copy the uh, Docker file and the run test script and actually changing them according to your plugin needs. Um, but if we want to reuse it uh, in a more uh, nicer way, I would suggest extracting common configuration, the steps that are related and are common to anyone, um, then adding some tooling to install a plugin and run the tests dynamically. So it would be part of the run test script as opposed to the uh, docker file uh, at least to some degree uh, and we will need to create an option to wrap the first those first two steps uh, in a, into a container for each plugin so each plugin could could actually create its own container uh, that will actually enable better caching in case the plugin itself needs a, a lot of a, outside dependencies and the dynamic run tests a step would be a, a too a time consuming for uh, for it. So this is all the slides I had. I will stop presenting now. And if you have questions, go ahead. Thanks, Jim. So, Marek. You expected me to have a question? Well, I do so. Um, one thing that I would be curious, and maybe you have mentioned it, but I, I missed that, but uh, how long roughly it takes to build such a container on your machine, and then how long it takes to run those tests, roughly? Um, so on my machine, the, the container build is something like half an hour, so it takes time. Um, but it will be less time each if you only need to um, run the tests. So the test, uh, the test run is very quick, something like five minutes and you're done. So it's really close to uh, running the test locally uh, on your dev environment. Um, but the build step is quite long, especially when, when everything has to be built from scratch. So uh, you can try and create a intermediate containers. Like for example, you can, run the yum install phase and have it in a separate container and it will actually shave you a couple of uh, minutes from uh, uh, from your run and the same with the bundle install the same with the npm install so um, those are the steps that take a lot of time because it uh, it has to download all the gems and it has to install all the 
uh, uh, binary um, uh, dependencies for each uh, gem and it takes time. That's why I was actually offloading that time into a container build uh, instead of doing it dynamically in the run runtime phase. So the idea is that the the code, your changes in the code, most of the time don't need a, a lot of a dependency changes. So the bundle install will just reuse everything that it all, it's already cached. The same goes for the NPM. Um, so the amount of uh, reaching out from your dev machine, which, which is the thing that takes a lot of time, will be minimal. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And uh, that's why I asked, because I think, especially with what you mentioned, like the GitHub triggering the, uh, what was that? Uh, I forgot the name of the service that builds the container. Quay. Yeah, Quay, thanks. Um, if we actually use that, I can imagine we would build the new container version every time when something is merged, and then we could use it as a base in our CI pipeline so that the PR testing would be faster. Because I think for every combination we, we run tests for, uh, we actually do install everything. And maybe someone could correct me in here, but but I think we could save our some, some time when we set up the CI environment by just taking the container that, get, that gets built once only after a new, new PR is merged. So theoretically, you can reuse my contain the containers that are already there for my plugin. Um, you will need to change a couple of lines inside of it uh, because this one is quite specific for for my plugin. But theoretically, it's a matter of find and replace, like running some set lines in the uh, run test script, and you you're basically done, and you will have most of your container already there and built. That was exactly the idea. And for testing, I'm using actually a stable version of Foreman. So we can have it for our stable versions and I don't know, for nightly, for example. So the churn on Quay will not be that big. Okay, Duke, any other questions? Okay. So if you, th so if anyone thinks of anything um, after the session is finished, I have a HackMD on if there's any ideas that come to you that we should follow up with after Shim's talk. I, did, I added a hack MD. I'll add it again in case anybody missed it to the, where we can just put any retrospective thoughts or any further ideas or any other type of, shall we say, um, any other questions or comments that we might have for Shim. And you can also write on the Foreman Community Discourse. So thank you very much, Shim. I appreciate your time. And thank you again. I am going to stop the recording. <laughs>